The Brandon Peters Show may contain explicit language and detailed plot points. For more information on the show, stay tuned to the end of the episode. curtain setting the sun heading into the weekend unless you're listening to this late night on a tuesday down the road or something uh, however we close with the song and joining me is filmmaker and director of bleeding audio chelsea christer hello hello we'll hello. be discussing the 1984 music video for the warrior from scandal featuring patty smith uh, the song was the lead single from their first and only album warrior without the the uh, which also featured "Hands Tied," "Beat of the Heart," "Beat of a Heart," and a cover of Journey's "Only the Young," uh, which was a very young song at the time itself. Um, the single was certified platinum in Canada. It peaked on the U.S. Hot 100 at number seven, was number one on the U.S. mainstream rock charts, and the album topped out at number 17 in the U.S. You've heard this song before, right? Sure have, and it. Uh... I definitely uh, have really wonderful memories of the TV show Glow uh, I and this song because I loved Glow so much and I am so devastated that Netflix canceled it and I will never forgive them for it. It was their best show they ever produced. Best show they've ever by produced. That. Hands down. Say. Hands down. I love that show. I picked this because of that. Well, it's a cool song, but I picked it. It was on my mind because I was thinking about Glow. Um and yeah, I'm so pissed that show is not coming back. Um, they, can, they should at least do a movie, yeah, you know, do, do like me. I would, I volunteer as tribute. I would happily direct that. There you go. There, <laughs> yeah. Like why, like wrap it up. What the yeah. fuck? Like you commissioned a season with a cliffhanger, then said you're going to make that next season. It's a... And then they're just like, oh, well, COVID will cancel it. I'm just like wondering what show got the glow money. It's just not fair. Like, I mean, yeah. I understand like everybody's schedules and stuff may have been complicated. That happens a lot too. Mm -hmm. But like, come on, come on, come yeah. on. I th that show I credit like, I know everybody likes the '80s stuff and Stranger Things and whatnot. But this show felt '80s better. Like it Feels looked like real 80s. life '80s. Then here's all the cool like things that happened in one day. So. Uh, yeah. but yeah, like that's, I just, oh, I love the drama of it. The performance, like all the cat, like it's perfect cast, perfect, um, amazing directing talent too. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, just, it's just like, I think what, um, this specific creative team does very well is they pick a theme or like a thing that they want to explore and they like put it in these settings that are so extreme that it's like really interesting because it's like the orange is the new black team and then they like take these incredible women and give them these like like full-fledged stories right. and like they're they're complicated they're like really you know great and wonderful and they can also be really awful and they make mistakes and they make you know good decisions and bad decisions it's just it's so good and so well formed and um, yeah, I was reading something about it where they wanted to ex explore the um, like uh, uh, just that that feminist movement in the '80s um, that was trying to trying to get more <laughs> more you know uh, more women op equal opportunities, mm -hmm. which is kind of where like that wrestling came from, right? Right. Yeah. Um, and it's just yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah. I the show was just. It's just perfect, and I loved it. So it was, and it has that sweet spot I've been talking about. Like I talked last episode about the show Hacks on HBO Max, and I swear I'm not sponsored by HBO Max. I, I <laughs> well, it's part of my AT and T program, so I don't pay for HBO Max. But um, there's this sweet spot of these like dramedy shows that's like they're 25 to 30 minutes a piece, and they're nailing it, and they don't feel like these hour longs on streaming services that are just like we're just an hour because or like we could be tightened down and they also the episodes this is like the closest to an hbo max show because each episode has a good arc like in itself it's not like some bridge bullshit that just feels like well 
you're going to binge this anyway, right? Like, and right. when you sit down to watch an episode of, oh, you've watched a complete story almost. There might, there'd be a cliffhanger, yeah. there's through lines, but they really pay attention and appreciate the art of an episode when yes. you're on television at home. And, and giving like a character, like digging into each individual character, you know, I mm -hmm. feel like, um, uh, I feel like that's something else that Glow did very well is just like all of these like women have these complicated backstories and they get more into it in like season two and season three, I feel like, whereas mm -hmm. season one is very much about like those primary three characters and their stories. Right. And everyone's kind of like, you know, supportive in, in the background of that. But it's, yeah, it's just, it's so, it's just so textured and layered and well and just stories well told while still keeping that through line like you were saying it's just oh god i just i love that show and so yeah when when you sent me this music video um i was listening to it i was like oh why is this song giving me so much joy like there's oh, i just like i've heard the song so many times and i just why am i feeling this like undulated joy and uh, other than the absolute madness that is this music video mm -hmm. and i was like oh my god it's the it's the song that they play in glow and then i got like very emotional <laughs> i was right. just like oh glow from, from, um, yeah. from the moment i hit play on the first episode of glow when it came out and this song played with those neon signs and yes. the credits. I was like, I'm in love with this fucking thing, no matter what happens in the next 30 minutes. I was like, it just worked. I was like, that's, this is brilliant. This is, and, and it worked. And oh, damn it, Netflix. Did I tell you about the glow Halloween party that we had? I don't know. Go ahead okay. and tell it again. Okay. So in 2017, um, we had uh, a glow Halloween party where I think it's the first time ever we had a Halloween party where there was 100% costume participation. Oh, okay. um, And what we did is we actually, we had this um, fire pit in our backyard and I put up, we like got like these sheets and ripped them and we put up like a ring, like we made a ring. Oh, wow. And um, the rule was that you had to design your own um wrestling persona that was like an enhanced version of your sh of yourself right okay, like kind of like yeah. in glow where you're like okay like what is the 80s wrestling persona of you as a person like you as brandon or okay. like me as chelsea right and so then um you had to come you had to have like your name and then i had little note cards on the table in the front hall and you had to put the name of your wrestling persona mm -hmm and two signature moves oh okay and then we took all of the names and signature moves and put them in a hat and then we went out into the backyard and um i played announcer basically and um i would draw uh names out of the hat mm -hmm. and i would have two i would call them out and like say what their name was and what right. their and we'd have people work the ring they'd come out and they'd work the ring and like it was it was amazing we had like oh, 40 or 50 people there and everybody was in these awesome. crazy sparkly neon amazing costumes and we didn't have we didn't let people wrestle it was gravel oh my god you know drunk people wrestling on gravel is not a thing that i nope. wanted so i was like nobody nope. actually wrestle but like you can just sort of like work the ring taunt and taunt the hell out of each yeah. other it was so much fun. It was the best party I feel like we've ever had. And it was just like, it was just an explosion of color and I'll, I'll send you photos. Okay. Um, but it was, it was honestly, um, we've been, wa we wanted to have a glow part two, um, but we just never really got a chance to mm -hmm. have it. Um, and so I'm hoping maybe this, this Halloween in our new home here in Los Angeles, we can actually host glow part two okay. with the LA crowd. But, um, but it was honestly, it was the best party we've ever had. And it was so much fun. And That's like awesome. everybody, everybody like went all out, you know? Um, and it was, it was really, it was really great. And some of the names people came up with were hilarious, you know? That's good. That's um, yeah, we we love we loved Glow, all of us. So I now know <laughs> if I ever get time travel, go to 2017 to your Glow party. Okay. Yeah, it was great. I posted some videos up on my Instagram when they announced that Glow was um, being canceled. I posted a couple of videos up, and they're pretty silly, so you can see them there. Okay, excellent. That's oh, so good. And with Glow, the two one thing I want to mention that's the most impressive: the wrestling in it didn't disappoint. They build up to this so stuff and it worked and it was like really funny, fun and awesome to watch them wrestle. Like, like how did usually it's like, Oh, we'll cut away real fast. So it doesn't, you don't see all this stuff. Like, uh, was it studio 60 on the sunset strip, that show with Matthew Perry and Bradley Ripper that last year where it was like, 
SNL sketches, but they would always just show you like a punchline or something, never show you a full sketch for fear that it might not look as good as they talk about. But right. But the wrestling was actually that good. And like those those women, the actors, like they fucking go for it. Like Mm -hmm. I'm so stoked on them, you know, like that they actually got in there and they like learned how to wrestle. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. Um, and you know what? This video it fits with glow like it really I, does I was like i thought it was so the... funny yeah so in it patty smith is in a kimono and she like gets confronted by this claw guy i i, I looked up stuff i got pale male is what they call them <laughs> pale male pale male <laughs> he's got long clawed fingers and they're like are they on a rooftop are they on a like i smoky and shit uh but like there's all these like fights that go on people are like dressed crazy the costuming was so cool in this video and she gets like her makeup gets crazy with her hair she starts out like she gets scratched and turns yellow i'm like well that was kind of (laughs) rad uh but yeah there's there's like so this guy is like taunting around and she's watching him and like he fights against some like net people like they had like they have like weird nets all over them and like like I can't tell what they are. They have like know. all of this tool everywhere too. Like I, I kind of love that I have no idea what these things are. And I'm just like in a trance, like what are they? Like because there's these fish people and there's it like, feels like flower like, people. Like super post-apocalyptic, like tank girly, <laughs> like cats. cats. Like- <laughs> yeah, totally. I, I oh my gosh. And they like when they fight, it's like tumbling in ballet type thing when they fight this guy uh, there's a referee one too i forgot there's like an official <laughs> up in a corner uh, and i don't know if there's like a winner or something it just like ends with her like singing at the camera like and and she oh she does like she does a shooting at the wall the bang right. bang and she's got her hand <laughs> motion that i'm sure took the nation by storm in 1984 i'm sure and like it's like it hangs on her for a good outro to like this is going to catch on but they don't catch her filming so much you see like i'm i know i'm doing visuals on a podcast but really great i do you're doing some uh some finger gun dancing yeah, it's like finger gun and then, yeah well i i've been releasing these as videos lately so maybe i'll just show my finger gun dancing um <laughs> And yeah, that and that's it. Like it's like I watched a thing. It's a very music video video thing, but um directed by David Hahn. Do you know what else he directed? What else? Nothing, just this. This, this is, just this? this is his only credit. Like nothing. I mean, else. honestly, like he probably like looked back at it and was like, it's not gonna get better than this. <laughs> and just like, like decided to quit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey David, could you could you direct this? We don't have any more money. Uh, we went over budget on <laughs> Pale Mail over there. Yeah, we we like, uh, we spent all our money on this weird choreography and these wild costumes and makeup. Although I have to say, like her kind of like slightly Bowie esque like yeah. like makeup. I I saw that and I was like, well, figured out my Halloween costume this year. You know, know, like it's like gotta a practice. weird like got got to practice the the like yep. dancing like this you know the finger gun dancing but it was just so wild like i mean they, it's just yeah you just have no idea what's happening and you're just like i don't i don't really care it's it's, it's do you know wild. what this song's about like because I, I, oh. I, I went through the lyrics i assume I it's like, about a warrior no i think it's about two like like promiscuous people like out in the prowl at night and like playing preying on each other like with those like hard to get games like that's what it huh. sounds like 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 I'm looking up the lyrics i don't know like that's what i, I got from it internet i couldn't um, i couldn't be i was like i was like i wonder what this is about if i just don't sing along and look at these on text and i got really i was just like curious about this one wow yeah shooting I, at the walls of heartache yeah. bang bang <laughs> yeah like <laughs> I'm going out, yeah. get, me, so get me a lady, or she's like, I'm going to go find me a fella tonight, and they both run into each other, and they're... What? I don't know. That's How did what... I not listen to the lyrics of this? Most of the, the shit, you just, it's catchy, <laughs> and you sing along. You're like, yeah. Love is the kill, your heart's still wild. Ooh, wow. what a lyric. What a yeah. line. No wonder they, like, went to the same people who, like, creative directed Cats, and were like, right. can you just, like, create monsters? We're going to let you listen Amazing. to this and then you just tell us the first thing that comes to your mind with this. 
this yeah. is the this is like the the like 80s like pop like punk rock version of mm. um uh love is a battlefield oh right? yeah, yeah, yeah 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 this, this is, is like, like call the, and response <laughs> this is this is the knockoff this is what it yeah this is because it's funny this band scandal which is scandal featuring patty smith but they had nobody other than patty smith as a front person but and this was her first like band i don't know why they pushed her but like they had john bon jovi played guitar for them for a year what in 83 so they they as soon as this song hit they they like like there was only two original members left of the band they toured for this album and called it quits that was it so that's why it's still attributed to just her yeah, it's uh, there's an EP they released like the year or year or two before this with like four songs. This album done. I guess they've reunited back in like '04, and then they've had members die. Like there's still only two original members now. But is it the same two? Yeah, it's <laughs> Pat, it different. Pat, Patty Smith and I can't remember the other person's name, but she would go on to have a successful solo career. She's um, also she was uh, actually after this. Uh, she was invited to uh, replace David Lee Roth and Van Halen, but she was eight months pregnant and had to turn it down. She was their first choice to That's replace David Lee Roth. That's fucking sick. But she couldn't go on tour right away like they needed or something. And that's who Eddie asked first. That's replace. really cool. Yeah. So that's a really a, cool fun fact. Yeah. Like there's that. always been a like, oh, they asked a female first. And it was like, it was Patty Smith. It was um, that, that would have been be interesting. Confused with the other Patty Smith. <laughs> <laughs> right uh but yeah so she she's also married to john McEnroe. didn't know that fun the fact tennis guy yeah so yeah they um but yeah so this was a a big thing I, I was surprised it wasn't as big of a hit as when i looked at the numbers but i'm like i remember this song forever i like i remember it before glow i remember it yeah um but I guess it's just one of those catchy ones and it has lasted the test stand the test of time you go on an 80s station you're gonna hear it throughout the Sirius XM um 80s on eight you'll hear it yeah bang no, bang it's, it's it's one that has definitely like you know towered over the 80s stations for a while but I do feel like glow gave it a bit of a resurgence true it's sure. a big old power ballad like it really one, is yeah that yeah, if you're an 80s cover band and you're doing like an encore, you have this and love and a love is a battlefield in the back pocket, come back out and to to jam them for sure. I like it. Yeah. There you go. yeah. They're a good, they're a good pair of those two songs. They are. Yes. And I have I've done both of them on this show actually now. Oh, uh, look yeah. at that. Yeah, I nice. just realized that. <laughs> you can create a playlist and uh and have have the songs go back to back. That one taught me about taxi dancers. Taxi dancers. Taxi dancers. Uh, uh, old, uh, old tradition of a woman who would just be like paid to dance with men at a club. Huh. Nothing more, nothing less. Taxi dancers. Because she, in, in the video, Pat Benatar leaves her small town and winds up in uh, New York or L.A. And she's in this club uh, as a taxi dancer. And uh, their boss at the bar is a dick. And they all the all the taxi dancers do a dance routine and revolt and they take it to the streets and and they win. that was the battlefield of love and now they all need jobs um but they're not with that guy so. i like it i like it mm -hmm. i've never heard of taxi dancers That's i didn't either till that happened so just uh things you learn in 2021 taxi yeah, dancing yeah yeah i like it you know Le learning all about uh about you know the warrior and uh, and the origins of that song and then and now taxi dancers. This yeah, the great. film career of David Hahn. We went over it today. <laughs> the, the, the David Hahn retrospective is now complete. I appreciate you for joining me on it, <laughs> Chelsea. We've we've done yeah, that. Yeah, we so. we did his entire catalog. This yep. is great. Yeah, very cool. awesome. Yeah. All right, we well, did it. We did it. So that'll do for this week on the show, Chelsea. Best week ever having you back here. So Aww, thanks for having me back. This is yes. fun. All right. Thank you. So please let everyone know where they can keep up with you, your work, the wonderful social media we love to brag about. Um, <laughs> anything else? Uh, my, my, my dog has an opinion about that one. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, so you can follow all the latest updates about my film, Bleeding Audio, on Instagram at Bleeding Audio Film, on Twitter at Bleeding underscore audio, and then on Facebook slash Bleeding Audio Film. And then you can follow me on Instagram at Chelsea Christer and then on Twitter at Chelsea Mark. 
All right. And I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Brandon 4 kuhd written work on whysoblue.com. The Brandon Peters Show will return next week. But until then, always remember to keep the positivity in your online film chatter. Thank you for listening. The Brandon Peters Show is a Creative Zombie Studios production. Produced by Brad Shoemaker and Brandon Peters. Written and edited by Brandon Peters. Announcer vocals by Jessica Olsman. Theme song by Metavari. Web design and show art by Brad Shoemaker with Brandon Peters. All music and clips featured in the episode are property of their respective studios and no infringement is intended. Additional information on this and other episodes at brandonpetershow.com. For any inquiries, press opportunities, or sponsorship, contact mail at brandonpetershow.com. The show is available on Apple Music, Spotify, or anywhere podcasts are found.